Greetings, Dan Halligan from KN to Games. First and foremost, I hope that everyone is safe and healthy during the global insanity going on. It occurred to me that I might actually be of use to all of you if I made videos now while everybody has a little extra time at home rather than waiting six or seven weeks to hopefully when we're all queued up trying to get our hair cut. So I am going to take that opportunity. I very much have wanted to make more detailed videos. Uh, that would be a euphemism for excruciatingly long videos of which I, I've sort of shown a tendency in the past. It's funny, you know, I prefer very surgical videos like uh, Watch It Played or Three Minute Board Games where I, I can get what I want quickly, but I don't quite make those. Anyway, um, what I wanted to do was I wanted to show as much of the new stuff as I could. I wanted to really dig into both st strategy and then the tactical environment. And when I say strategy and tactical, I'm reminded of the best explanation of the difference between those two, which is strategy is when you have nothing to do and tactics is when you have something to do. <laughs> so uh, that that's interesting. but. Uh, I, I do report that I have a new computer, and it is loaded up with Adobe Premiere Pro and 64 gigabytes of RAM. If there's anything when you're making graphics and videos that you need, it's RAM. So I will be able to edit out most of the stumbles and bumbles and provide some interesting graphics from time to time. I do want to warn you that a couple of things. First of all, see this green felt? I've regressed. My wife sort of took my topper for this table where I do my filming and for her puzzles while we are in quarantine. And I just can't take away that because puzzles have actually been a ton of fun. Boy, try finding a puzzle anywhere right now. That's hard. And then these are still prototype components. And the prototype components... Uh, the same ones I got from the pre-production copies. You're going to see a lot of things, like if I pop in a little closer here, these are laser cut. They're not cut with dies. You're going to see different um, iconography on some, missing tile sorting numbers. There's just there's going to be various stages of evolution for some of these components. Anything that was significantly different I took it out but I want to be able to show as much as possible for example we have the modified extended play round track we have the upstairs downstairs servants we have milestones are going to be played we have new objective cards that come in the upstairs downstairs set we got the laundry here and um, the carriage house is a new tile the retiring room which is a new tile from the Wessex expansion and we're going to be playing with Howard um, I'm going to try to show as much new as I can, and I'm going to spend some time on this because I figured that we have a little extra time. And I would like to not play horribly, which is generally what I do when I'm trying to walk and chew gum, which uh, by that I mean pro do production at the same time I'm thinking. <laughs> so. Hopefully you'll find this interesting for those of you who are aficionados of three-minute board games and people who are concise. Goodbye. We'll, uh, we'll rendezvous with you on some future video. So one thing I do want to point out is I have uh, the new iPhone that gives me different levels of telescoping right on the spot in a microphone stand. It's a weighted microphone stand to stabilize my camera. If I want to if I want to do something like look at Howard's cards, I can go like this and we can, you know, I can move the weighted microphone stand and we can see things up close. I can return it back to the middle of the table and flash out. I'm not going to do a ton of that, only when we're going to be talking about particular uh, particular details that are important to decisions that are being made. So what's our game? We're going to play a two-player game between Howard and York. I find that interesting because they each come with an extra servant. And while you might think that the cook vastly outstrips the extra footman, mm -hmm, 
York's always been my favorite original family for that extra footman. I know there's not a lot of people who are heavy gamers who agree with that analysis, but it's been my go-to. Um, so we're going to play a two-player game between York and Howard. We're going to be playing on the extended play round track side of the Tableau Obsession round track that comes with the upstairs downstairs expansion. So let's go take a look at that. See, we'll try to see how things work. Voila. So this, this round track, well, I'm going to move along. So what's different is the national holiday has been moved up significantly. Hat tip, by the way, to John Weber, one of the uh, play testers who made this recommendation and did most of the play testing with us. You're also going to see the tile reserves here. Tile reserves are just wonderful. It literally, it's just wonderful. I'm not going to wax poetic here, but tile reserves are in play. You're going to see as you go along that you have uh, a late objective card draw, which is going to be an interesting setup for that final turn because you're generally going to have a lot of resources at this time. You're going to have an ability to maybe refresh the market with the useful man and or with some extra reputation and really make a play to try to complete an objective in just one turn or maybe get lucky. Anyway, so that is the extended play round track. We'll come back to the middle of the table. Let's flash on out. Uh, we're going to be playing with two. We're going to be playing with two of the new milestones. So look at that. I've got to learn how to guess this. Um, randomly drawn. This is interesting. Uh, first person to get the four upstairs, downstairs servants can then take one of their markers that come with the game and claim that eight victory points. And then the first person to, and there'll be a second position available, first person to flip seven tiles to the rose side. So those will be in play as well. So we're also going to have some updated objectives. You're familiar with this one that come in the upstairs downstairs expansion. Here's two new ones. For example, this is to complete three rows of five. And this one is 13 servants. Obviously, there's an increased servant target because of the draft that we're going to add and the fact that we can hire on passing and that there are more servants. Let's see what we have over here. We have another tableau uh, objective, which is to get five of one color. You can only score it once, so if you did it with two, you wouldn't, you wouldn't get to take that twice. And then the original upstairs, downstairs servants, which that is interesting because does that not echo that milestone. So that's going to make a different area, definite area of focus, although this doesn't have the same timing as the milestone. We're going to be able to look at who our starting guests are and help us to decide how we're going to handle our servant draft. So our servant draft is a new way to get access to additional servants in and not only is there a servant draft, but I'm bringing up on the screen here the new passing rules. This is so critical and really transforms what was always a downer of a turn into a turn where you can um, perhaps save a little money for a buy in the market at the same time that you go ahead and expand your service staff. I love it. It, it really plays very well. I think many of you have already begun to adopt that because... You certainly can do it in the original game. It'll elevate scores a little bit, um, but, uh, but it really does boost the past turn. So what do you do with a draft? You put out one of each of the small servants, so you're not going to obviously see a housekeeper or a butler, and you do not put an under butler in this display either. I'm, I'm getting the top of the servants for hire. So this is our draft I've moved these servants that are in the draft down by the player area because I just want to make one quick comment about the strategy associated with the family board that's selected and the bonus servant in the draft. The draft goes into great detail in the upstairs downstairs rule book which is available online. The key here is that whoever's the first player, in this case it's Howard, uh, but, but Howard didn't exist. So this player position, the first thing that's done is we identify a first player. 
and then the player who is not first in a two-player game, obviously this is the last player, it's the other player, they get to pick their board and their servant, and they want they want to look at the synergy between the two, perhaps. Perhaps they just want to deny the first player the ideal servant for an extended play game, which is going to be York's move. There's, in my opinion, no more valuable servant than the useful man in an extended play game because we're talking three village fares. He increases your money in village fares to 500 per fare. Not to mention all the extra actions that take place. And since he's got such uh, an ability to affect actions, whether it's discounting purchases or it's making available um, tiles that uh, the family reputation isn't quite qualified for yet, uh, just so versatile, boom. That's what that's what York is going to take. But now there's a little bit more strategy besides just denying the opponent here, which is that Howard begins with a cook. They can't take this cook. You can't have two of any upstairs, downstairs servant, unlike you can have multiple footmen, ladies' maids, and valets. Um, so you can't have two. So this is ruled out of order which means when this gets restocked back up into Servants for Hire, this is going to be exclusively for York to take advantage of if they so desire. And what Howard wants to do is leverage, in my opinion, the family abilities really need to be leveraged early. They sort of disappear into insignificance when you start getting an elevated reputation, a strong deck, and you've, you've moved on into the second, third, and fourth season. So early is when you want to take advantage of that family uh, ability. And here with the cook, there's nothing that would be better than to pair the head housemaid with the cook who will allow me, if I tilt back here, to screen my prestige invite when I use my main gazebo early. That'll be a play. So that hopefully I get a level three guest, or maybe if I late in season one get to level two, a level four guest early and hopefully get a dramatic favor out of that that combo. So that's that's their decision right there. That's their decision. Let's let's get about playing the game. I want to take warning, phone on the move. It's a little easier for this part uh, just to talk about what I'm thinking as each player I want to focus on as far as getting out of the gate early. When you're playing standard length game, I tend to find that it's fairly scripted. What happens is that it's so the season's only three rounds where there's an activity. People generally are going to play this, and they're going to play that because you want to take advantage of the significant benefit of two village fairs. And then here, because you want to you want to get busy and start to build a path as your reputation rises. Um, in an extended length game, you've got a little more flexibility. Now, I personally hate open courtship, but if you're playing an open courtship and essentials comes up, that's the scenario where you'll see somebody, particularly the last player or two in the turn order in a in a game with you know three four players passing on the private study to retain that three victory points and to maybe squeak out uh, an early first season courtship win. I hate open courtship. Uh, put that in there for the people who want to know what's in front of them. I like the mystery of the closed courtship where everybody gets to jockey for position and try to, uh, to win a courtship based upon being strong in one particular category. Or what I play most of the time, which is variable courtship, which is what we're going to do. So the variable courtship, we have a 16. This is 1 through 4, 5 through 9. Wait, this is 1, one through 4, 5 through 8, 9 through 12, 13 through 16, 17 through 20. So our courtship is going to be sort of a closed courtship on the fourth round we're going to have the reveal of the theme card that dictates what we're going to decide when we get to the last courtship space of the season. So knowing that, people are probably going to get busy playing this because there's three 
village fairs and an extended play game, but the timing of that can vary. So as I look up here, let's take a look. I'm looking for a flower room or a garden. Well, the flower room would be the only thing that would actually pop up here in a, uh, an initial setup. So this really doesn't give me any guidance on what to what I, I want to get to in the market, but you know what? This does. Because look, I have four female servants. That's how many female servants there are. This player has two. They have a concentration of footmen. I'm thinking I can predict that York is going to go for this because that's going to empower them to never have to go get a valet. Um, and here, this is a female servant for the laundry, and I have four female servants, so when I don't have a particular need for a cook or a head housemaid, I can grab a quality uh, guest and the head house, a uh, casual guest, and the head housemaid is going to allow me some extra screening there, so maybe I can find one of those cards that allows me to invite a second level guest and routinely refresh them with the laundry. So that's where I'm thinking. Well, I look over here at York, and they do like estate tiles, but that's going to be rather expensive early. Interesting that they, now this is interesting because the other factor I'm not taking into account is the milestones. Um, I and Howard am uniquely equipped with one visit to the butler's room by getting a useful man and a hall boy to complete that objective. So I'm going to do that early. They cannot get that milestone with one visit to their butler's room. So as soon as they go to the butler's room, I know that my next play has to be to do that. But I'm going to be probably doing that early. Um, but getting over here, they actually may try to do that because my gosh, you have both a milestone and an objective card. Obviously, a milestone's first come, first serve. Objective card's got to be done by the end of the game. But look here. Howard didn't know this, but we also, not only is the brushing room sensible for the use of our footmen, but the brushing room helps us meet an objective there. And nothing else jumps out at me for, for York. So let's get playing. I'm zooming in here to have like a, a play area for the cards here, and then we can see what's going on there. Maybe if I move this over just a little bit so we can get a peek at the reputation. We're also looking at our target, which is the laundry. So how do we have the most efficient turn? Well, I want to get after my family advantage draft combo, which is to get this second level guest hired, which is going to inform whether or not I can do a good screening action of the prestige guest and get somebody that I want, but I also want the 200 necessary to buy the laundry. And I can do that with two gentry coming out of my hand. So I'm going to grab the footman for the essential service. The supplemental servant is going to be the head housemaid. It's going to allow me to screen that invite. And then I desire to have the laundry. So I'm going to go with the earl. And let's also go with, I'm going to try, well, I was going to say I'm going to try to read these. I should read some of these. This is a new one. I think it's sort of fun. So this is Roger Haskell, Esquire. The diminutive Mr. Haskell is prone to embellish the tales of his travels on the continent. So they are going to be in the main gazebo having a little tea. I need my service over here. And we now go ahead and enjoy favors. Uh, starting with money, I'm going to realize 300. Let me point out my good friend Rob from Australia has given me the glorious, sent me, just as a, a gift, these glorious nanny narking coins, which are now part of my obsession setup. So I have that 300. Let me go ahead, I'll just put that up there. And then I have an invite, and I'm going to be able to look at two and keep one. Wow. Oh, we got a promo card in there. I'm going to bring them up close. So, now get the reflection off. Um, wow. <laughs> 
what to do. A little bit better victory points over here. Uh, doesn't have the negative of being forced to keep guests, but um, wow. I'm going to go with Baron Narishkin. Let's read him. So Baron Ivan or Andreevich Narishkin, I'm probably butchering that even though it's my own card. Baron Narishkin, a Muscovite noble and world traveler, has discovered the rolling Derbyshire countryside. So I'm going to take that and put that in my active hand. I'm going to discard. Now when you're playing with higher player counts, make sure you get those discarded players or those rejected players to the bottom of the deck because you'll, you'll need them at the very high player counts. So we're done. We'll break down. You know what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to do elaborate breakdown um, on camera. I think that's just going to consume too much time. So I'm just going to reset the market. So we'll go ahead and we'll purchase the laundry as planned. That'll cost us 200 which will go back. And now we'll go over to the York turn. So the Cabinet of Curiosities came in after the purchase of laundry which I have to make a comment, which is my favorite thing to do when courtship's not going my way is just sell my soul for prestige, high-end prestige improvement tiles because they're like mini monuments, man. Just, just, look at that, mini monuments, glorious. Uh, that's a side point. So I'm going to go ahead and do what's planned, which uh, let's move that over just a little bit right there. And I'm going to do my... Uh, acquisition of the brushing room through the private study because I can. One of the things I, I really like to do is I like to have a flow of guests early coming in to me. Um, nothing worse when you have a thin deck because you're off doing other things besides making connections. So I'm going to use the lady of the house and no other service required. Now some of you might be thinking, can I use that uh, useful man to make the brushing room free? And you cannot, that is against the rules. So, but that brushing room is only 100 pounds, so that's gonna be more than covered. So pretty simple turn here, we get 200 pounds. And we look at two, keep one on our guests. So let's look. Oh, so try not to, come on, damn, not that hard. So I think we're definitely going here as opposed to her. He's an old card. I'm not going to read him. Goes into the active hand. She goes at the bottom of the deck. We acquire the brushing room, which goes right there. And we pay that 100 pounds, and we'll break down off camera. Okay, something I want to make a point. I'm bringing you out of the cradle. And I'm going to come down because this was a major request from those who played the original Obsession was to have a better order of play. So if you follow this with some diligence, you're going to find yourself not missing anything. So rotate service so that we're going to rotate our service. Check the round track, and by checking the round track, we're looking for any special events that are going to pop up, of which there are plenty, but there's not one on round two of extended play. I'm also going to see if I have a monument of the servants' hall, because that is an action that's going to take place before we start our activity. And for example, that monument may bump me up on a reputation level that will suddenly enable a higher uh, level activity with a greater prestige rating. So I just wanted to make the point there and also buy from the market, which is probably one of my more serious, let me use my, my shadow finger to point that out. <laughs> buy from market was probably one of my most serious omissions, omissions in the last order of play, which I just assumed came with the money step, but that's now spelled out. So let's go put you back in the cradle. Go back in your holster. So it's it's a round two turn for Howard, and we know that he wants to play the Baron, but we do not have access to our valet, which is a little bothersome. So we're going to get busy here with getting some guests coming in. In particular, I'm curious to get a good 
first uh, level guest. I always say level, but a casual guest that really has some nice abilities so that I can use the laundry to, to maximize their value. We're going to put that there. We need a couple family members and I'm looking at mother and son in the study planning for the village fair. Let's make sure that we're focused there. And uh, we have 100 pounds or a reputation point. I'm going to go 100 pounds. If I get an American heiress from the casual deck stack, I want to be able to use her early without paying a reputation penalty. So I don't want to risk uh, having up one because I'm going to have to partially pay that reputation penalty. So I'm going to take the 100 pounds. And then I'm going to look at two. Oh, look. Oh man, that's a tough choice. And there is the heiress. And that is, uh, do I do it? Do I roll the dice? You know, I'm not going to take the American heiress because I particularly like his reputation and the fact um, that I already have a number of guests that give money. Obviously, the Baron brings money. Ah. Uh, Boy, I'm torn. I'm a big lover of American heiresses, but I'm going to pass on her and I'm going to take him. I'm back at the bottom of the pile. And I have 200 pounds to spend. And I'm going to grab this retiring room because I can. Now, this carriage house has a discount in the final version, but this one doesn't, and I'm not going to change the rule for that. So I'm going to go ahead and put the retiring room there. And we'll break down and go to round two, turn for York. So turn two for York, servants quarters came out. And those of you know me, that's my absolutely favorite tile. Love, love, love the servants quarters. Uh, but that's gonna be expensive right now at 900 pounds. So uh, we're going to rotate service. We don't have any monuments, servants hall, or anything on the round track. You know, I want to point out that you know you're probably looking at this saying this looks crappy. I really want to stress these are prototype components. And when they did the panda did the prototype for me, they cut these tiles a little bit too small with the laser. That's why they we got gaps like teeth in between these. And you see the so please the, this looks a million times better in the way that this sits and lays in the final production using die cuts. So just gonna mention that. And we now are going to um, get after a tile that's caught my eye. And that is the croquet lawn. I love to have a sequence of money tiles so that when I need money, I'm not replaying the Bowling Green. You get in one of those games where you're, you're playing that Bowling Green all the time, man, that's a disaster. It really turns out well. The Croquet Lawn is inexpensive. It's only going to cost me 200 I only need to add 100 to that. It's inexpensive. And in addition to being inexpensive, um, it gives me a path so that the next money play I want to make, if I see something I like, I'm not going back to the Bowling Green. Now, if you get a lot of money guests, you can you can ignore that strategy and get your money in other ways. So we're going to there. We've certainly got plenty when it comes to the footmen that we need for that. And because I have money there and I'm going to get a discount there and get that croquet lawn down to 100 pounds, I'm looking to do some reputation work. and a little bit of money. So I'm going to go here. And we enjoy 400 pounds. Grab 400 pounds. Love getting up on the pounds count. And we get two reputation. And we are going to purchase, I'm going to tilt this over here. The croquet lawn, we're going to use our useful man to discount that down to 100 pounds. Bring that back, and I will break down here off camera. Sorry, I keep forgetting to show you that I'm 
actually paying my debts to the bank, and I did that for Howard on the last purchase of Willow right there. So we're now going to go to round three, and we're going to be taking a look at Howard. What are we going to do? First thing, according, according to the order of play, is rotate our service. Do that. We don't have anything happening on the round track. Next turn, we will have a village fair. No monuments, no servants hall here, but boy, we know what we want to do is we want to get busy with Baron Narishkin. And Baron Narishkin, we are going to get him out on the bowling green. Wonder if, wonder if he's even familiar with that activity. We're going to enable a prestige rating three prestige guest to come to let me slide you over there to see the reputation come to a family whose reputation is only one because of the remarkable skill of our cook Mrs. Puggins who makes wicked larded oysters and going with Baron Narishkin is a little bit of a play that makes me happy as a pea in a pod and that is the young lady the young lady, as you know, has an admirer bonus. Let me bring this up here for those that may not be familiar with that admirer bonus. When she's being paid conspicuous attention by a prestige male guest, it, uh, it really reflects well on the family, and uh, she gets that two reputation bonus, which is contingent upon a male guest that comes from the prestige category. We have to go ahead and provide that. And then look, we're going to bring the head housemaid in and we're going to screen that invite. Now that right there gives you a beautiful snapshot of the upstairs downstairs expansion in action. Those of you that watched my lead Kickstarter video from last fall, I was very passionate about the fact that I didn't want to change the gameplay, but I just wanted to uh, emphasize my favorite part of the gameplay which is the service the domestic staff and to use new domestic staff to help with risk mitigation so right here this is uh, this is a way that we can avoid getting a guest that uh, randomly would hurt us and this is a way to work around a limitation that might actually be something that prevents us from advancing and uh, keeping pace with competitors. So these are, this is an example of upstairs, downstairs in action. I just love it to death. So we go ahead and get our benefits. We have 300 and 300 is 600 pounds. Let's get one of these beautiful, look at that. I gotta, again, Rob, can't thank you enough. Look at that, that's beautiful. Actually, upon seeing these, but before I was gifted them by my Australian friend, um, I was going to make coins for this game, but uh, you can't make a better coin for this game than that, so why do that? Uh, so we got the 600 pounds. Reputation, we get two from the Young Ladies Admirer bonus, plus one from Mrs. Puggins. So we zoom ahead with three reputation. We also get look at two, keep one on the invites. And the lovely Lady Mary Russell and Honorable Winston Haygood. Uh, we're going in that direction there. Put this one back. Love this turn, man. That's a fantastic turn. Um, but you know what I didn't do? You're going to see a hole in the market up there. I never refreshed the market. That was my bad. Let's reach into the bag of goodies. And look what we pull out. We pull out our first monument, the imported marble floor. So now I have 600 pounds, and you know that monument uh, might change my thinking a little bit. Let's just take a look at the market. So a couple of things to note. The tile reserve is going to kick in, and it's going to make that servant's quarters only 300, which is a distinct advantage for York, who's going to go first in Season 2, and my guess will probably be after that servant's quarters. Um, but I've got 600 pounds, 400 pounds over here for York. York could go back to his bowling green, but I don't think he can get to the 1,100 pounds if I don't take a tile, 1,000 pounds otherwise. 
fascinating on whether I should hold off or not. Wow. I'm going to hold off because I want to see, let me peek over here, I want to see what the courtship is before I make a move. And having 600 pounds, it gives me a lot of power. So I'll go ahead and I'll break this down. Round three turn for York. Let's rotate service. I'm handicapped here. I'm handicapped by a bad active hand. This is called a thin deck. I have only invited this one guest. Love, love you, Lord Mortimer, but this is an example where I'm pro I'm going to play. If I, if I play these two, then I have to pass next turn. But now look, if I play these two, as I think I'm going to play, I'm counting on a single straightforward invite. I could pull a bad guest and have just uh, just horrible options. This is a thin deck. This is where you don't want to get. And I, I can't play here because I don't have two ladies. I could come here, but I hate double playing the Bowling Green, and that's going to put me in a position where I'm trailing or tied in every category with the revelation coming. I think I want to go with the gazebo. I can't. I would go here in order to give me a little bit of a leg up uh, on on Howard as it relates to prestige, but I'm going to go here. So playing that, I'm going to put our footman on the main gazebo. We are going to play Lord Mortimer and Honorable Marianne Waters. And we're going to put our service there. No extra servants doing us any favors. We come and we look for monetary. We do not have it. We look for reputation. No admirer bonus here. Lord Mortimer is a casual guest. And so we do get two reputation, which is nice. And then we have two invites, a prestige guest and a casual guest. But we have no choices. So don't hurt me. Um, I would say definitively not hurt. We have a promo card here, which is the lovely Feifrau von Lugenst... Why, what, what did I torture myself for? I don't even have my glasses on. The Feifrau, along with uh, Thomas McMillan Esquire. Both are great. A little bit out of reach. Don't have a cook, but still, that's, that's a guest worth getting. However... I can play him with the young man and continue before passing. So we're done with that turn. We're going to go ahead and break down. We're going to see what the courtship theme But is. before I do that, I have 400 pounds to spend. Now, I sort of think that I'm not in the, I'm not in the sweepstakes for that monument. I could buy that cabin to Curiosities and lock up a prestige courtship but if you notice on my bonuses I like estates oh my goodness do I oh that's the state room I thought I had cabin of curiosity given that I get a bonus there for estate I'm going to go and grab that gable conservatory for 400 Pay that in. Now I'm going to break down, and then we'll look at the theme for the first courtship. Here we are. We're at both a courtship and a village fair. First things first, let's flip the courtship, and look at that. York buying the Gable Conservatory was huge. But note, there's an English garden in that market which I need to repopulate. Let's go, let's go do this because this is really interesting. My gosh, what a market. So we've gone and we've revealed a state and we're going to get to round four turn for Howard. I panned out a little bit because I want to get a look at the market as we formulate our plan for Howard's turn. I know that most of you think it's a slam dunk for the English Garden because that's probably going to win us a courtship. But any time you get a monument, particularly, I would argue that second only to a service monument, this particular monument is going to lock up any essentials courtships for the rest of the game. 
it's 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 just there's just not as many tiles typically built out in the essentials category they seem to be situational and they seem to they seem to go for big numbers when you got a robust domestic staff but th this is this is going to be a game changer however you got to go with the courtship in hand as opposed to two in the bush if you will so we are going to do that let's let's start with our order of play so we're going to rotate service we are going to check the round track. Well, we know we have a village fair. Howard planned for the village fair, so we are going to re realize 300 pounds from our support of that local activity on, on the, uh, the family's property. And we're gonna get two reputation with the, the locals and increase up to a level two. And now, in hosting an activity, we've got another set of choices. Let me zoom in here. So the options are really two, and I wanna talk about the retiring room. It's, it's the option we're not gonna select, but it's a very nice, flexible tile. I really like it a lot, because normally I'd be dead in the water right here. I'd be dead in the water because I don't have a footman, which is the bulk of those early activities. Let me slide that over so you can get a peek at the bowling green. And that head housemaid here, you could say, well, I could host whist in the parlor, but I don't have any family members, female family members, and I've just got two ladies where I would need two ladies' maids, which I don't have given that the housekeeper is going to be occupied. But this is a nice play because I could then play the ladies' maid here, use the housekeeper over, for example, with Lady Mary Russell, and get two favors there and get another bump of reputation. Not gonna do it though, and the reason is, is we wanna do this. This is our past turn where we're gonna hire during the pass, and I'm gonna bring that player aid up on the screen because I can't emphasize what a significant change, a good, a change for the better, it is to be able to hire on a pass. And we're gonna do that, we're gonna hire on a pass because think of what we can accomplish during this pass turn. We obviously refresh our service, we get our deck back. Same time, I have plenty of money to go ahead and buy a courtship winning tile. At the same time, by hiring the useful man in the hall boy, I can take that milestone. And for the last three seasons of the game, I will have all four upstairs, downstairs servants at my disposal. That to me is the definition of a productive pass, which anybody who's read my glossary or heard some of my previous videos, I emphasize that a productive pass is the is, is critical to quality gameplay. So let's pass. do that. So I'm we'll, going to bring up on this part of the screen the card. What's the first thing we do? We refresh service. We're going to take back our deck. And we're now going to get a choice between three activities of which was of which the one we're going to use is to be to hire. We're going to hire the useful man on the hall boy. We are going to immediately claim that milestone and we are going to spend 600 pounds acquire the English garden put ourselves in a leadership an enviable leadership position as it relates to the courtship that's a great turn normally I'd refresh this off camera but I think there's going to be some significant options so I'm going to go ahead and do this live here we get a billiards room coming in in the 800 pound position. And let's go ahead and take a look at what can York do to offset that great power play. First, let's follow the order of play. We're going to rotate service. We're going to recognize that we have also planned for the village fair, but unlike our counterpart, we have a useful man that can, uh, let me slide this over a little bit, that can be sent to the village to help with the construction of stalls and other handiwork for a productive village fair, very much more productive than our friend the Howards. We're going to grab 500 for that. We're going to get two reputation. 
and now we have an activity to host. So what can we do to counter that big power play? Well, we're not going to win the courtship. And the one thing I like to emphasize is when you've lost a courtship, or if you're losing courtships badly in particular, but as soon as you lose a courtship, put the pressure on the person who's won the courtship from another direction. And there are two tiles. Let's go visit the market. There are two tiles that can do that. Both of these tiles can do that. The question is, can I afford them? But both of these tiles, that can be done. First of all, that is a big number of victory points for season two, should prestige come up. And that is a dominant number of victory points in season two, should estate, uh, excuse me, essentials come up. Plus, the thing you have to keep in mind, and this is absolutely critical, it's one of the compensations for going last, in this case, in a two-player game, last is second, I get two turns in a row, because that first player marker is going to come over to good old York family, and I get two turns in a row, which means I can uh, pass on purchasing that monument and bank the money to make a power purchase. They can't get a shot at the market in between my two purchases. That's very, very powerful. So it would be possible to play the croquet lawn this turn and to purchase that monument this turn if I needed to. But it would require me, because of service limitations, to use a special action and spend three reputation to get another servant. I don't have to do that because of the fact that I'm going first in season two. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into some service by doing a pass action, and I'm going to hire a couple of servants. And what two servants am I going to hire? I think this is just delightful. Mr. Smarty Pants over there just got a milestone. I'm going to essentially eliminate the value of that milestone. They don't know that I have this objective card. Now true, I'm not getting another objective card by getting this one, but when I get second place on that milestone, then this plus my four points equals his eight points, and I'm going to get the use of servants. Now it's going to require me to do an extra hiring action because I have only one upstairs downstairs servants now, but I anticipate doing that in an extended play game. So we're going to hire. Let's go ahead and get that done. I'll bring up on this side of the screen the action, which is to refresh our service, to grab our deck, and reclaim our discard pile. Now when we refresh our service, we do not refresh this gentleman. He is not in expended service to get refreshed. He was used this turn, and not till the end of this turn will he go up into expended service. An important distinction. And now I'm going to hire. So let's go ahead and put that up there. I have the choice. Obviously, I'm going after this objective to offset the value of Howard's milestone. I have to go back. So I definitely want the cook. I want the cook. I want the cook because I've got the five row. The five row wants to come try. It's not Mrs. Puggins. Howard is Mrs. Puggins. Uh, Mrs. Patmore. Uh, Mrs. Patmore, she, she wants to come if Miss Patmore's there, and I want her to come. She has got just a bonanza of favors. But I don't know that I want to necessarily pull on the hall boy or the head housemaid right now, because I'm going to have to go back and get them for this objective. And I'm wondering if the hall boy and the head housemaid are the most useful. And you know what? I think, I think yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the magical pairing of those two. So that's my hiring action. I'm going to flip that over. And I have 500 to spend. Now I want to analyze a little bit what I'm going to be faced with next turn. So next turn I'm going to have either a 400-pound cabinet of curiosities or a 700-pound marble floor. I've got five now. I have two coming in, and probably I could put another 400 with that. So I could make a small purchase. I could pick up that carriage house, for example. 
which would also put me in a leadership position for service because I would have three points in service. And I'm going to do it. You might think I'm a little nuts to do this, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to get the carriage house, take a leadership position in service. That carriage house is not going to be any cheaper when it comes to moving over into the reserve. So that's 300. I get 200 back. I will have no problem with a refreshed deck and using the croquet lawn to be able to buy whichever tile I want in those two least expensive positions in the market. And our turn is complete. Let's take a look here because the Babbling Brook, one of the winning tiles in the Kickstarter campaign for backers to develop their own tiles and vote on two winners, is now arrived. A thing I'd like to point out for those not familiar with hybrid tiles, the tile comes in on the side of the line underneath the stylized flower. This is the side that's on the back side. So you flip it over, you get basically a preview around the servant of what the back side is. So the babbling brook is out. And let us go up and deal with a courtship. So we move on to courtship. And we come back here and we're going to pan out. We count up four victory points here and three victory points here. Howard wins the courtship. Howard gets their choice. They're going to select, this is a common choice early, they're going to select the lovely Miss Elizabeth Fairchild, and they're going to take a victory point card, which, whoop, wrong, whoa, almost turned over the wrong one, which I'm not, you know, obviously this would be hidden, but we're looking at it. Five victory points, very nice, and a refresh builder's market uh, ability, which can be so key late in a game when you just want to go for an enormous event or activity. So that's going over there into their play area. We're going to go here. We're going to go to the tile reserve. So let's see the tile reserve and how it functions. This goes, any service tile goes to the service tile reserve. This slides down. Reach in. Okay, we got a barn. That's the service tiles reserve is active. The barn goes down into the tile reserve. We reach in and we get another croquet lawn. That's interesting. So we've got a lot of money out here, which is a good thing for, for an extended play game. You don't want to be short on sources of money. So now we're set up for season two and when we come back, we're going to begin with York, and I think everybody knows what York's play is going to be, but it's going to depend, before I forget, almost forgot, it's going to depend, whoa, it's going to depend on this card, and would you look at that, that is an essentials courtship. So when you come back to video number two, I believe that you will see York purchasing the marble floor tile.